Coming up next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan swims with blue sharks in the Atlantic and tries to pet one. Will he get bitten? Then, an underwater cave holds a deep surprise as Jonathan ventures not just underwater, but underground. Finally, Jonathan tries his luck swimming with the largest toothed animal on Earth, the sperm whale. All of this today on Jonathan Bird's Blue World. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. The Blue Shark, implicated in attacks on shipwreck victims and known to possess a mouthful of razor sharp teeth. This vicious looking fish has a few surprises in store for me as I prepare to leave the protected shore of Rhode Island and venture into the realm of the Blue Shark. I'm on board a shark diving boat run by veteran shark fisherman Charlie Donnellan. In recent years, Charlie has turned from fishing for sharks to diving with sharks. We leave the harbor in the early morning because we have a long way to go to find the sharks. After heading straight out for three hours, we can finally stop. Blue sharks are pelagic. That means they live in the open ocean. So to find them, we had to travel here 40 miles from the coast of Rhode Island. And as you can see, there's no land in sight. The first thing we do is drop our shark cage in the water. The cage will protect us from the sharks when we go diving. Next, we need some sharks. To attract sharks to the boat, we use something called chum, which is basically ground up fish parts. And it looks like this. This bucket is filled with chum, and we're throwing it overboard to create a scent trail in the water. Basically, the current carries the chum off and the sharks smell it. Then they follow the smell back to the boat. And when they get here, they find Charlie. And he's throwing nice little bite-sized morsels of fish over the side to keep the sharks interested. Within only minutes, the incredibly sensitive noses of the sharks have detected our chum and converged on the boat. That's a nice, look at him right here. Come on, right over on the back of the boat. Look at him, see him, see his blue back? Oh yeah, that's a good eight-footer. Scientists don't know very much about sharks, but they do know that blue sharks are incredible swimmers, often traveling thousands of miles in only a few months. And the reason they know this is because of these shark tags. If you put a shark tag on a shark in Rhode Island and the shark is caught thousands of miles away, you can tell from the tag where it came from. Charlie volunteers to tag sharks for the National Marine Fisheries Service so they can learn about the migration patterns of blue sharks. The tag is a tiny piece of paper with a serial number rolled up inside a waterproof capsule and attached to a barb that goes under the shark's skin to hold it in. This is our shark tag. Charlie is an expert shark tagger. He's been doing it for 20 years and today I'm getting a lesson. We're going to attach it to our tag pole here. Okay. The tag goes on the end of a pole. I'll use the pole to stick the tag into a shark from a safe distance. It's going to look like it's going to trail behind the fish. But you still need to get the sharks within reach of the pole. And to do that, we'll use some bait. We have a piece of fish on a line with no hook. What we're going to try and do is get the sharks to bite it. And sometimes they bite it so hard they won't let go, and you can pull them right out of the water. But since there's no hook, it doesn't hurt the shark. Oh, we got one now. He's got it. Whoa, yeah. Nice one. 
Sometimes the bait brings them a little too close. It's hard to aim with all that thrashing going on, but now is my chance. Did I get him? Yep. All right, I did get him. Now, let's see if it's a male or female. We'll Outstanding. That was pure luck. I know it looks painful, but thick skin on the shark's back makes the tag barely noticeable to the shark. Now we fill out a card that we mail to the National Marine Fisheries Service. The card has information about the shark that we tagged, such as the location we tagged it, the sex, male or female, and approximate length. Some of the sharks that Charlie has tagged have been caught as far away as Africa, a distance of over 2,500 miles. Blue sharks can really get around. Now I'm too excited to stay on the boat any longer. I need to get in the water with the sharks. I put on a thick wetsuit to protect me from the cold 60 degree water and then take the plunge. Immediately the sharks notice me and come over to investigate. I head straight for the cage and get in. But from inside, I can't see the sharks very well unless they come really close. So forget this cage. I'm going out to swim with the sharks in the open water. As soon as I'm out in the open, the sharks closely approach me and seem to have an intense interest in my camera. They bump their noses into the lens and seem confused by it. Believe it or not, all living things put out tiny electrical impulses. Sharks have special electrical senses that can detect the electrical impulses of living things. They can tell that the camera isn't food, so they don't try to bite, but the camera does seem to pique their interest. The sharks are coming so close that I can actually touch them. They seem so engrossed in the electrical signal from my video camera or by the chum in the water that they don't seem to mind being gently touched as they swim by. It's easy to see where the blue shark gets its name. It has a gorgeous deep blue color on its back that probably helps it blend into the ocean. Well, I don't see him at all. While I'm having fun underwater with the sharks, Charlie's still trying to tag a few more. This shark grabs his bait and takes off with it, right between the bars and into the cage. This is a big shark, but it still fit through the camera port in the cage. Now it can't figure out how to get out. I'm afraid the shark will hurt itself, so I have to see if I can help without getting bitten. I open the door and try to lead the shark out, but it's thrashing around so much that it doesn't realize there is a way out. I have to be very careful here because the shark could feel cornered in the cage and it might interpret me as a threat. Finally, I have to grab it by the pectoral fin and yank it out. All I can say is, I'm glad I wasn't in the cage when that happened. It might be safer on the outside. By the end of the day, we managed to tag five sharks. Who knows where they might turn up and when? Swimming with blue sharks showed me that sharks are not evil and dangerous. They're wild animals and unpredictable, but certainly not mindless killers. I can't help but admire these beautiful and streamlined predators, blue sharks in a blue world. <laughs>